the host of uh, Coffee with Democrats, which uh, occurs live. Welcome to Coffee with Democrats, a sensible platform for progressive conversations. Coffee with Democrats is a grassroots movement dedicated to hearing from Democrats, candidates, legislators, and friends from all political backgrounds who want great conversations. Coffee with Democrats is committed to increase Democrat voter registration and Democrat voter turnout by making voting more exciting and meaningful. And now here's your host of Coffee with Democrats, Kevin Dawson. perspective a little bit. I was the youngest promoted locomotive engineer, excuse me, one of the youngest, not the youngest, but one of the youngest locomotive engineers ever promoted in the history of railroad history in the United States. I was only 19 years old when I was promoted as a locomotive engineer. I worked for 43 years as a locomotive engineer before my retirement. The feat of being promoted as a locomotive engineer is one that only a few people, as young as I have been, only a few people have have been uh, have made that achievement, and even fewer people have made that achievement since, and it's impossible now because of the three year three year rule. It took my let's again put that in perspective. It took my grandfather from 1914 to 1940 to become promoted as a locomotive engineer. 26 years. It took my father from 1946 until 1970 before he was promoted as a locomotive engineer. Again, 24 years. It only took me 14 months. 14 months to be promoted as a locomotive engineer. When I hired out, I joined the United Transportation Union, Engineman, a union which is affiliated with the AFL-CIO in September of 1979. I served as a local chairman. A local chairman is another name for a union steward. I worked as a union steward for local 1017 from 1980 to 1991. And guess what I still carry in my pocket today? Your union. Yeah. My union. <laughs> I joined the Brotherhood of Locomotive Engineers in 1991 and I have remained a faithful member of what is now the United, excuse me, the Locomo Brotherhood of Locomotive Engineers, a part of the Teamsters Union, for whom, whom I've made financial contributions to the Democratic Party and paid my union dues every day, or excuse me, every month until my retirement on September 1st, 2022. Why am I such a proud union member? Why? Unions are the great equalizer. I believe that with all my heart. Today, the United States has been hijacked by extremely wealthy people. Let's rehash this country's past, and, the, and let's go back to the 1980s when, when we started seeing the demise of the unions and why that happened. That's when the unions became the focus of the Republicans, in their obsession to bust labor unions, they instituted constant attacks on labor unions by convincing the public and labor members that Republicans knew how to manage our employee benefits, wages, and retirement better than the unions. Reagan hoodwinked the American people. He thought that we should be talking about uh, trickle-down economics when in fact, trickle-down economics was another word of accepting corporate greed. That's right. 
He transferred the wealth from the middle class to the corporate elite. That's what trickle-down economics did to the United States. Reagan used his past as president of the Screen Actors Guild as a sheep in wolf's clothing. He attacked the unions. Reagan busted the air traffic controllers. The Reagan administration fired 11,345 proud union members. Those air traffic controllers were fired and they were banned for, from serving in federal, life, federal service for life. Reagan's firing of the government employees encouraged large private employers like Phelps Dodge. Phelps Dodge is a mining industry to break their union in 1945. Hormel, a food service company, broke their union in 1986 and 87. The International Paper, they broke their union in 1987. All of these companies hired strike replacements rather than negotiating contracts with their current employees. In 1970, there was 380 major strikes and lockouts in the United States. By the end of the 1990s, when Reagan left, the, that number had dropped to under 200, and by 1999, through his legacy, there was only 17, and by 2010, there was only 11. Who do you trust for fair labor practices? Say it with me. Not Republicans. <laughs> Again, not Republicans. Since electing our Democratic President Joe Biden, between October of 2021, in March of 2022, union representation petitions filed in the United States National Labor Relations Board increased by 57%. <laughs> Unfair labor practices change charges increased by 14% during the same period. Again, who do you trust for fair labor practices? Yeah. Not, Not Republicans, exactly. <laughs> Since electing President Joe Biden, more than 250 Starbucks locations filed petitions, and after notching a first win in late in 2021, 54 Starbucks co company-owned locations have formally organized. Yes. Yes. Railroad, uh, railroad unions negotiated the largest wage and benefit increase in 50 years. But that's not enough. What we got as railroad workers was not enough. The United, excuse me, the UPS, they successfully negotiated a great uh, wage increase just a few weeks ago and averted a strike through negotiation with their labor, their labor unions. And it was overwhelmingly voted in favor by the union membership. Again, who do you trust for fair labor practices? Not, not Republicans, exactly. Since electing Democrat President Joe Biden, workers of Amazon Warehouse in New York City recently voted to form their first union at the second largest U.S. Em uh, private employer and join the Amazon Labor Union. Google fiber contractors in Kansas, Kansas City successfully voted to unionize their small office on March of 2022, became, becoming the first workers with bargaining rights under the, the brand new one-year-old Alphabet Workers Union. Who do you trust for fair labor practices? No. Not Republicans. Since electing Democratic President Joe Biden, these efforts resonating with the broader public. A Gallup poll, now listen to this, a Gallup poll in September of 2021 showed that over 68% of the Americans approve of labor unions. That's the largest, highest rate since 71% in 1970, or excuse me, 65. Labor unions are on the comeback. So who do you trust? Who do you trust for fair labor practices? Again, not Republicans. Let's rewind uh, to 2016. It's a bad date. When Trump, a political fanatic, hijacked a civilized nation, the world was taken by surprise. The nation became racked with scandal, self-aggrandizing salacious lies, mismanagement, economic collapse, and delusion. 
It was during this time that, as president that, the lab, that he bashed the labor unions and even threatened their very existence if they tried to cross him. Who do you trust for fair labor practices? Not, Not Republicans. Not. <laughs> All right, please give me a few moments to talk about Democrats saving democracy. When we defeated him in the ballot box, Trump attempted to overthrow the government of the United States of America on January 6, 2021, a date which will also live in infamy. Yes. Amen. Who do you trust to lead our great nation? Not, Not Republicans. <laughs> but our struggle is not over. No matter how long it may take us to overcome the premeditated domestic invasion of the American people and their righteous might, they will win through to absolute election victory. My belief is that I interpret the will of the people, the American people, when I assert that we will not only defend our form of government to the utmost, but we will make it certain that this form of treachery shall never again endanger us. Who do you trust to lead this great nation of ours? Not, Not Republicans. <laughs> Trump will be defeated. Again, he will be defeated. He will be relegated to the annals of history as a political fanatic who hijacked a civilized nation with a failed intent to declare the United States his personal right-wing utopian empire. Who do you trust to lead our great nation? Not, Not Republicans. At any rate, saving our democracy is what we are going to do. That is the resolve of Copy with Democrats, an organization I co-founded one year ago. Our purpose is to connect blue dots all across America and increase the Democratic voter turnout, registration, and increase voter Democrat voting um, in, in the ballots. It is our resolve to compete for democracy hand in hand with every man, woman, every person, every one of them, to stop the spread of Republican white evangelical nationalism. That, in my opinion, is the ill of this state. Yes. Who do you trust to lead our great nation? You know, Not Republicans. Republicans. Our great unions, coffee with Democrats, the Oklahoma Democratic Party and the Democratic National Committee linked together in our common cause and in our time of need will compete for, ever, for our native soil, aiding each other like good allies to the utmost of our strength because Democrats like you and I give so generously on events like this, we shall not flag or fail. Who do you trust to lead our great nation? Democrats. Not Republicans. I'm going to get to the Democrats here in just a little bit. So bear with me. Here is why we shall not flag or fail. As Winston Churchill so eloquently said, and so greatly said, never give in. Never give in. Never, never, never. In nothing great or small, large or petty, never give in. Accepting the convictions of honor and good sense, never yield to force. Never yield to the overcoming might of the enemy. Never, never, never. We stood alone on November 3rd, 2020 as Democrats. And to many people, it seemed that our account was closed. We were finished. All these traditions of ours, our patriotic songs, our school's histories, our women's liberties, our First Nations and non-white peoples part of the history within this country were gone and finished and liquidated by magnetism. Who do you trust to lead our great nation? Not, Not Republicans. Very different is the mood today. Democracy, the other party thought, had drawn its final breath. Had, but instead, our Democratic Party and our democracy stood in the gap. There was no flinching and no thought of giving in. And by what seemed almost a miracle to those outside the United States, though we ourselves never doubted it, we find ourselves in a position where I say that we can be sure that we have only to persevere to overcome. Who do you trust to lead our great nation? No. Not Republicans. 
Do not let us speak of today as darker days, but rather let us speak of today as sterner days. These are not dark days. These are great days. These are the greatest days of our nation and our country has ever lived. We must all thank God that we have been allowed, each of us according to our stations, to play a part in taking, making these days memorable in the history of our great Democratic Party and our labor unions. Labor unions are expanding at Amazon and, Star and Starbucks. According to the 2022 Bureau of Labor Statistics data on unionization in 2022, more than 16 million workers in the United States were represented by a union, an increase of over 200,000 people for in one year. And I have a message. I have a message to Ryan Walters. <laughs> you can call unions terrorists and organizations all you want. We know our strength and we will show great patience. We will demonstrate great discipline to your attacks, but make no mistake of our collective resolve. Unions are poised to increase our numbers, positively impact Oklahoma's future, and improve our nation, and we will prevail. Democrats are poised to increase our numbers and positively impact Oklahoma's future, but also improve our nation, and as Democrats, we will prevail. Who do you trust for fair labor practices? Not Republicans. If we can't trust Republicans, who do you really trust to uphold democracy? Democrats. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. We are poised to return liberties to women through reproductive rights. We are poised to return liberties to our teachers through improved access to union representation, pay, and also supporting leadership. We are poised to resume working hand in hand with our first tribes in Oklahoma and representing their sovereignty. Yes. We are poised to resume the fight for equality of all peoples of color. We are poised to resume respect for all people to love who they want yes. to love. We are poised to restore the First Amendment by keeping churches as respected places of worship and faith, yet keep them out of our school, our public schools, and out of our government. the Second Amendment to its origin of the right of the people to keep and bear arms within a well-regulated militia yes. and keep weapons of war off of our streets, yes. out of yes. our schools, out of our shopping centers, and away from our football games. Yes. If you can't trust Republicans, who do you trust to uphold democracy? Democrats! Democrats. Exactly. Yes, Democrats. Uh. Democrats like you and me. Democratic President Joe Biden said today, just today, he put out his press release. It said it best, said it best today in, in his address, today we honor the dignity of the American worker. We remember that America wasn't built by Wall Street, it was built by the middle class and, and the unions built the middle class. Yeah. Yeah. Lastly, at this fundraiser today, please continue to give and, and be generous with your donations. Our great Democratic candidates in our great country, our great county, our state's parties are relying on contributions from Democrats like you and I. Thank you. May God bless our first responders. May God bless our troops. May God bless Oklahoma. And may God bless the United States of America.